My hand was shaking as I reached out to grab the door. I walked into the classroom and saw the instructor standing at the front of the class. I went up to shake his hand and he greeted me warmly. Then he handed me a handgun and a holster and told me to put it on. I spent the summer of 2019 with the National Rifle Association trying to find out more about how the organization tells stories in order to build a political community of gun owners. Confused? Let's step back. When most people think of the NRA, they think about lobbying or campaign donations. But in most years, the majority of the group's budget actually goes towards their teaching and communications programs. Their firearms instructors teach about 750,000 Americans every year. Their magazine regularly reaches 2 million people. The NRA has three museums, and up until this summer, they had their own online television network. Much of what these publications produce takes the form of a narrative, what we would call storytelling, which scholars are increasingly realizing is a big part of political communication. Their publications and their instructors tell these stories. They tell stories about good guys with guns. They tell stories about guns that belong to people, heroes and average folks alike. These stories are important for the NRA to gather and motivate supporters. Studying them helps us to understand why gun owners are more likely to vote, write their representatives, and take political action than non-gun owners. Thanks to Shirk funding, I spent three months of the summer in the United States, attending the NRA's annual convention, taking firearm safety classes, interviewing ordinary gun owners, and analyzing the NRA's National Firearms Museum. I wanted to study the stories that the NRA told, but more than that, I wanted to understand what guns mean to the ordinary people that use them, and why these stories resonate. For most Canadians, especially those from cities, guns are objects of fear. They make us think of criminals, mass shooters, and danger. But to those who use them, they mean very different things. Along the way, I met Susan, a triathlete and office worker. Susan started shooting with her father, who had passed away only months before we met. For her, taking her dad's old revolver out to the range was a way of staying connected with his memory. For most, the ability to use firearms was intimately connected to their core political values. Individual liberty, autonomy, personal responsibility. Others spoke of firearms being a tradition. Coming back to Canada, I now have a much better understanding of the NRA and the American gun culture, and I'm excited to share what I learned. Americans and Canadians are said to be in the middle of this culture war. Conservatives against liberals, east against west, cities against country. In times like this, we need to cross no man's land and find a way to chart a path to dialogue on difficult issues. I hope telling stories like this can help get us there.